take the Union Jack out of our flag and it all falls to pieces. <laughs> Hello, John. Maggie told me so much about you. <laughs> Shame. It feels as if I've known you all my life. Let me introduce myself officially. I am Mrs. Evita Besuidenhout, the South African ambassador to the independent Black Homeland Republic of Barbeti Sweti. This is my embassy, Blanche Noir. John, it has become my task, with the blessing of President de Klerk and, of course, Mr. Nelson Mandela, to share with you, via this video postcard, the new South Africa. Philemon, my houseboy and chauffeur, is working the camera for me. Philemon, come and say hello to Master John. Master John who? No, Master John, what's his name? Oh, Philemon, don't be so cheeky. <laughs> hello, Master John. Yeah, that's enough now, Philemon. John, Philemon is doing so well, in spite of everything, and being black. But Philemon is not one of our typical, uneducated, communist-leaning, lazy and cheeky blacks. Oh, no. Philemon is one of my personal blacks. Well, John, Maggie, of course, made your job world famous. And when she came here, I took her hand and saw that she was properly rewarded as a true friend of South Africa. <laughs> Zulu chief Putulizi even gave her a gift for a change. At my insistence, Minister Pip Gweta renamed a dainty flower after her. Wherever she went, she was hailed as a legend. Women cried and touched the hem of her jacket. Babies were heard to utter their first words. Teenagers wept with joy and old people called her name. And that was only the whites. Blacks were so pleased to see her too. She was followed by vibrant fans known all over the world for their exciting street dancing. And then she spoke her first words in Afrikaans. This for me a groot for reg um van dag hier TVS. There, exactly as I had taught her. Then I helped her pose with the head of the Bruderbond. Put Dennis at the back. Put Dennis at the back. I smile for you, please. An honorary Afrikaner <laughs> herself. Action. Maggie had such a busy schedule here in May that she didn't see half the things she promised to. So don't believe a word she tells you about the new South Africa. So, my little secretary, Boki Bum and I... Now, where is Boki? Boki? Ah. Boki and I have decided to show you and your little wife... Uh, uh, Norma. Norma. The things that Maggie missed and that you two should know about South Africa. Did you know that for half our history we were part of the British Empire? That we have some very close links with Great Britain? Mama, Frau, when did we begin with this English project? Talk English, Boki. English? English always makes the most terrible reality sound so noble. Like what, my Frau? Prejudice, contempt, class. British? <laughs> How funny. He has such a sense of humor. My thesis is called The Union Jack Connection. So why do you start at the tour, madam? So why to? Pretoria. The last time I was in Pretoria, I was locked up without trying. I should hope so. Uh, uh, don't fight you two. I'm in charge here. We start in Cape Town, where civilization stepped ashore in 1652. The first Afrikaner. The first racist. The first South African. Philemon, bring your camera and madam's makeup box. Owen Boki, lock Tansara up in her room. Mifra, mm -hmm. I'm not sitting next to Philemon in the car. Can't he go by bus? He is driving us, Boki. Oh, that's different. Since Mandela was free, Philemon is so cheeky. He's always watching me, my friend. He lusts after me. Yo, I can always feel him addressing me with his eyes. Bring your sunglasses, Philemon. Beaches now, anyone can come, even dogs. Black skulls and Indians swimming in our seas. Never mind, we remove the shark net. Philemon, come, come, come. <clears throat> John, can you see the beautiful view behind me that you see on British television? The fairest cape in the whole circumference of the earth. Now, who said that? 
the mayor of Cape Town? Sir Francis Drake. <laughs> One of your pirates, yes! How do you know? I had to learn a few useful things at school. South African history, painting a wall, how to make petrol bombs. Philemon, row madam across the bay, it's nearly time for lunch. Come, Boogie. Isn't this wonderful? This is where the first human being set foot on the land of darkest Africa. Dutchman Jan van Riebeek, 1652. Portuguese, Bartholomew Dias, 1496. He doesn't count, he was Jewish. Philemon, how can you talk in the row at the same time? Don't talk, row. John, did you know that a British fleet sailed into our table bay long before the Dutch or the Portuguese and tried to annex this cape for England? But your King James II didn't want a colony here. <laughs> Sis, just imagine how different our history would have been if that had happened. Yeah, apartheid might have worked. Well, this is the new South Africa. Apartheid is dead. Apartheid is now just a pigment of the imagination. Decent whites and savage coffers rejoice. That predicted bloody revolution will not take place. The struggle for peace will leave no stone unthrown. Philemon will have lunch up there. Ah, uh, John, like a lone she-wolf, Maggie fought those terrible sanctions against us. And we in South Africa are so grateful to her, and of course to you for following her instructions so nicely. <laughs> what did you say, Philemon? I said nothing, madam. UK sanctions against South Africa are over thanks to John Major. <laughs> but John, we all know that sanctions were a terrible flop. They resulted in six million blacks losing their jobs, while some of us whites only lost a little bit of weight. <laughs> Take this Cape Lobster. We sold them to third world parties who relabeled and repacked them and then resold them to you as Israeli lobster fresh from the Dead Sea. <laughs> Hypocrisy, madam. Survival, Philemon. Hypocrisy. Another one of those lovely words we learned from you English. That's true. <laughs> but don't feel bad, John. We Afrikaners understand. We know that hypocrisy is the Vaseline of political intercourse. <coughs> ah, look. This beautiful mountain. Imagine what Nelson Mandela must have seen from his cell on Robben Island for 20 years. I wonder if the IRA prisoners have this view from the maze. What's happening down in Cape Town? Oh, damn, another protest march against us. I mean, against apartheid. Amanza! Oh, this is the ruling National Party caucus room where all the major decisions about the new South Africa are made. <laughs> if you look outside, you will see our Houses of Parliament. When the ANC takes over, we'll turn that great hall of the people into a casino. Oh, ha, ha. You don't have the education to count the money. No, no, don't fight, you two. The National Party has been in power for the last 43 years, since long before you two were even born. Now the National Party is open to all races. Disgusting. Wonderful. Now, no one can accuse us Afrikaners of ever discriminating. Can I join the National Party, madam? Of course you can, Philemon. We will welcome you with open arms. Just queue up with everyone else. White people here, colored people there, and blacks over there. And to think that most of those terrible laws that are blamed on our parliament were passed in their building next to the Thames. Thames, Miss Bookie. Who cares? We now have our own tricameral parliament with three chambers. One for whites, one for Indians, and one for mixed race colors. And us blacks? No, you blacks don't need a chamber in parliament, Philemon. You are in all the chambers. Sweeping the floors, cleaning the tables, polishing the green benches. Pointing the cameras. <laughs> yes, Philemon. That is what we learned from the British Empire. That democracy is too good to share with just anyone. Yo. But the other colonies never had apartheid, madam. The Australians were all jailbirds who virtually killed everyone within the first 60 years. <laughs> Today we have 27 million blacks in South Africa and they only have 160,000 left in Australia. American? Philemon, madam is still talking. After hundreds of years of racial discrimination and slavery, can the Americans talk? There's a British finger in that all-American pie, too. But the British themselves... Can the British ignore Northern Ireland and point a finger at us in South Africa, where we enjoy religious freedom on every segregated front? No. Boggy, tell Pretoria, there's no place in my film for all this detail. If people want to find out about our history, they can get the official version from the Department of Information. We were British for far too long. Yeah, and here he is. Cecil John Rhodes, thief and empire builder. 
just another Brit who had to come all the way to South Africa in order to become rich and famous. Action, Philemon. Action, madam. Even Harold Macmillan became world famous after his infamous Winds of Change speech here. I met him the night before at a dinner party given by Hendrik Verwoerd. There was a terrible southeaster wind blowing. Harold was walking in the garden trying to think of something to say in Parliament the next day. I came down this path to show him some indigenous flowers. Suddenly the wind blew my beehive horizontal. I fell into Harold's arms. Oh, he held me tight. I then told him how my mother always called this wind the Cape Doctor. It cleans the air of such ugly things, a real wind of change. Well, Harold looked so relieved. Only the next day after hearing his speech in Parliament did I realize how much I had inspired him. I remember when Nelson Mandela was freed. Uh, they had a press conference right here in your garden. They did, yes. And in full view of the world, you danced in your petunia patch. <laughs> Archbishop Tutu, when apartheid is dead, I also want to dance in my petunia Ooh. patch. Is, is that the toy toy? You, will you show me how to do the toy? Hop, hop, hop. Hazel, my father. Hazel. Hop, hop. <laughs> Speaker of the House says, no, we cannot film in Parliament. He says it will impede the dignity of that august democratic institution. And I thought we had freedom of speech in South Africa. We do, madam. It is after speech that freedom goes. Uh, madam. We can't go to Cape Agulhas because of our secret military rocket testing area. I can't go to Robben Island. I can't go here. I can't go there. We can't even take a little boat and go into the Southern Atlantic because of our non-existent nuclear experimentation. I can't get permission to go anywhere. Because of the camera? Because of you, Philemon, because you're black. That's it. Black. Let's go where blacks are welcome. Madam, Victor Fester prison is that way. Boy, boy, come here. Uh, yeah, share this among your friends, eh? Thank you, madam. It's a pleasure, boy. <laughs> Ungrateful peasants drive on Plumot River. Why do you keep? going on about the grey form. I filled in all the relevant forms and my secretary faxed them to the department. Oh, how come I'm being hauled over the coals by a junior minister who's not even white? You know, I was Nelson Mandela's warder for 27 years, eh? Yeah, 20 years on Robben Island, six years at Paulsmore Prison, and then here. 27 years. I was longer with Dr. Mandela than Dr. Mandela was with Mrs. Mandela, and less trouble too. Nelson Mandela lived here. No, man, not here. This is my bloody room. <laughs> Warders and prisoners don't share the same cell. No, why don't you follow me? I will show you where Nelson lived. Now, be careful here of the step. Uh, do you know the South African government came here and put up this plaque on this pillar? Can you see? Nelson Mandela lived here rent-free. Of course, this was his private patio where Nelson entertained his friends from other prisons as well as members of the South African government who came to ask his advice in secret. Did his wife Winnie stay with him here, no, Winnie? No, she refused on political grounds, but I can tell you that Winnie and her football team preferred the five-star hotel where they had colored TV. Of course, Dr. Mandela only had black and white. Let me show you the most famous video. This is the video of Nelson's release that everyone in the world saw. Look, there is me. No, there is me. No, man, there. What? Where is me? We didn't watch when we and my family prefer sport. Sport? Well, let me show you the box of old balls that Nelson got from the Wembley Stadium. This is the most popular video in South Africa, Mr. Major. Even with the ultra right wing. They just played backwards. Philemon. Hey, 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 don't steal anything, man. Everything here has been inventoried and double checked. Yeah, boss. Yeah, boss. Donkey. 
Hey, Buki, look at all these wonderful things Dr. Mandela left me when he went to his other house in Soweto. It's boxing gloves, there's underwater goggles and snorkels, even a free pass to Disneyland, man. Things people sent him while he was in prison, hoping to become his friend. Do you know that this box of postcards all comes from the Reverend Jesse Jackson? No, no, they all say the same thing. Please don't forget my name. Hot, as if anyone can forget the Reverend Jesse Jackson, eh? The only member of the Jackson family who doesn't look like Diana Ross. Hey, you! Hey! Hey! Hey, you! Hey! <clears throat> uh, this was uh, Nelson Mandela's swimming pool. But you know, one Sunday morning, I slipped here on a green cocktail onion and fell straight into the pool. Yeah, man, I nearly drowned. <laughs> but Dr. Mandela saw my predicament. He got into the swimming pool, he walked across the water, and he pulled me to safety. You see, Philemon, Nelson Mandela can't swim. They're making films about Dr. Mandela's life all over the world. <laughs> and he didn't do anything for 27 years, while I can make 14 different bird sounds without even using my hands. <laughs> oh, they say the new political prisoners due here soon they won't have their own fax machines or swimming pools. They say they might not even be black. Switch your film on. There's even talk of turning this jail into a timeshare for members of the present government. Abstractus. <laughs> That's to say if Mrs. Mandela doesn't come to do time first. <laughs> Switch off, Philemon. Switch off. Tot ziens, Jom Jan. Tot ziens, Bokkie. <laughs> Philemon, Philemon. It was you. You gave me the wrong application forms, and now everyone in Pretoria is furious with me. Oh, <laughs> and now you blacks want a transfer of power over my dead body. Give me the keys. Give me the keys, Philemon. I am driving. You are in disgrace. But that ward is so terribly one-sided. Making comments about conservatives, and Philemon kept on making subversive remarks. I did not. You did. Mevrouw Philemon talked. Philemon, Philemon, fingers on lips. You're in disgrace. Not a word. Not a word. <laughs> What's so funny? The Government Gazette. In 1990, 702 coloured people turned white. 19 whites turned colored. One Indian became white. Three Chinese became white. 50 Indians became colored. 43 colors became Indians. 21 Indians became Malay. 30 Malays became Indian. 249 blacks became colored. 20 colors became black. No blacks became white and no whites became black. <laughs> That's not funny, it's true. It was true in the old days of terrible apartheid. Maybe now in the new South Africa, some people will want to change back to what they were. Philemon, we no longer classify people according to the color of their skin. Now it's according to the color of their money. Oh, now which way do I turn? Which way do I turn? Just stick to the right, madam. Always to the right. Ah, stand still, Philemon. I want to get the curve of this magnificent language monument, which represents the potential growth of our beloved Afrikaans. What did our great Afrikaner philosopher N.P. van Weyglo once say? Afrikaans is the link between Western Europe and Africa, forming a bridge between the enlightened West and magical Africa, while standing between both forces like a glistening tool. <laughs> Bitte you near side blast, snow tight. Blow, Bucky, blow. Oh. Well, at least Bucky seems to be more secure now. Philemon! C. 
see what nice things we build you blacks. We need houses before toilets. Only because you people choose to live here, Philemon. In the new South Africa, there is no more Gloop Areas Act to blame. In French? Boki, I'm talking. Apartheid is dead, Philemon, if you like it or not. Yes, madam. So repeat after me, apartheid is dead. Yes, madam. Thank you, Philemon. But isn't this the township that Margaret Thatcher was going to rename on her visit here? Horrible, my friend. No, it's a beautiful minimalist township called Ifinchlianga. When Master Major comes, it can always be renamed New Brixton. And so please! What is it, Pookie? Can I be excused? You want to leave the room now, here? Nature calls. I must obey. Stop, Philemon. Miss Boggy, careful of the snakes. Philemon! Especially the black mums. <laughs> Philemon! Oh, Boggy, go now, go, go. Philemon, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Action, Philemon. Action, madam. John, this is the windy beach where the sailing ships arrived in 1820 and all the British settlers waded ashore in these dresses. Otherwise the natives would have seen them naked. They came from terribly depressed areas like Liverpool, Birmingham, horrible places, Brixton. So full of blacks and Pakistanis. Not then, Boki, only now because we don't allow them here. But those Brits only came here because they were paid to. They came here because of our terrible frontier wars. They were only sent here to act as a buffer between white Buddha and us blacks. A buffer between us Buddha and you blacks. <laughs> Mr. Major, they only came here for the cheap labor, as they still do. They came here for the sunshine. They came here to steal our land. Your land? Our land? They came here for apartheid. They brought apartheid. <gasps> Don't move. Don't, 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 be casual, be casual. There's P.W. Buerta. Philemon, go and film him. Casual, Philemon. Hey, hey, Futsak, I don't give interviews. Listen, after 11 years, I led South Africa from the land of milk and honey across the river Rubicon into the wilderness, and this is the thanks I get. Where is my Nobel Peace Prize? Do you realize who I was? I was entertained by the most important people in the civilized world. President Stresner of Paraguay, President Pinochet of Chile, Franz Josef Strauss of Bavaria, Margaret Thatcher. It is thanks to me that apartheid is now dead. We no longer practice apartheid in South Africa. We don't need to. We have it down to a fine art. But don't blame me for apartheid. I knew nothing about apartheid. I was only giving orders. Footsack, man! Footsack! Hey! Footsack! Well, these are the clothes we Afrikaner women wore during the Great Trek. Now, how can I explain it? Uh, Iraq, my friend. Iraq? You want me to admit to John Major that we sold field guns to that sodomite? No, my friend, just a parable, like in the Bible. Oh! Oh, yes. There was a Saddam Hussein-like presence in the Cape. Britain. And we Boers had to trek like the Kurds across cruel and barren land to find our... Oh, what is the word George Bush always uses? Autonomy, my friend. Autonomy. Independence. We Boers wanted safe havens in the Free State and the Transvaal, just as you yourself suggested for the Kurds in northern Iraq. The British hounded us from our land, taxed us to bankruptcy, forced us to pray in a foreign language, demanded our servitude. Any decent Christian people would do no less than rebel. Beautifully said, Boki. Our history in a nutshell. Thank you, Mifro, but actually it refers to Northern Ireland. Come on, drive up, drive up. Seriously, my friend, what did the British give us other than heartache and pain? Ooh. 
Let me see now. Tea bags? Fish and chips? The freedom of the press. How would you know Philemon? You've never seen it. No, Philemon, this will not do. I think you are just a terrorist disguised as a civilized menial. First of all, you mix up all my application forms and get me into terrible trouble with the authorities in Pretoria. Then you pretend you can run one of these American cars and look what's happened. Here we sit in the middle of nowhere, which might be very American, but not at all convenient for me. Now you have 10 minutes to fix this car. Fix the car. But madam, I'm liberated now. Well then fix the car, please. I'll strike. Oh, you'll strike? I'll strike you with my traditional cultural weapon. Philemon, don't let the new South Africa go to your head. You know what still happens to black servants who are cheeky to their white madams? Yes, madam. They are sent back to the homelands to die of malnutrition. Oh, no. Now you'll just be turned into middle class and have to fend for yourself against the newly legalized communists and anarchists. Really, Miss Boggy? Oh, yes, Philemon. South Africa has now something completely unique in the civilized world. A communist party with plans for the future. You're so right, madam. Soon you will even get the vote, and then you will be responsible for all the mess. You, Philemon, not madam. How, oh, madam? Norma, I had an identical Fuertek address and little bonnet made specially for you. It's coming by post. Oh, it's a beautiful conservative blue made from Winsmoor linen. So terribly, terribly, you. Listen here. The great trek started in the Cape, huh? uh, where this stone is, where the Boers abandoned their homes and lives rather than knuckle down to British imperialism. Oh, taxes. Taxes? This terribly heavy stone. <laughs> Meddlesome missionaries, lots of stones, horrible little stones. But when you people freed the slaves without consulting us, that was the final milestone round our necks. Of course, we trekked. We didn't trust your British maps, which showed us that there was a nice flat road all the way to the Transvaal. Oh no, we rather went all this way round, across the Drakensberg. Oh, John, do you realize what that means? Drakensberg? It's like the Himalayas without llamas. <laughs> Boki, show Mr. Major. We... <clears throat> we carried our wagons across the mountain. Well, if John Major doesn't realize that we Afrikaners need as much compassion as the Kurds, I really don't know. <laughs> to what lengths do I go to promote my beautiful, beloved land? <laughs> I feel like Moses. Except now, of course, they say even Moses had a mixed marriage. Damn communists. Well, thank heavens, tomorrow is Sunday. Ah, we can pack away that damn camera and be normal people. Come, we are nearly over the top. Home with the free state. <laughs> Action, madam. Say action softly, Philemon. We're not supposed to be working today. Take two, madam. Action. John, it's Sunday today. We don't talk politics on our day of rest. But this is where Borky's family lives. <laughs> Shame they don't even speak English. They speak American, like on SATV. This is real hardcore Afrikaner territory that hailed Margaret Thatcher as a deposed queen. She even spoke some words of Afrikaans here. Buy a donkey. <laughs> Philemon, we're going into the church now. Come. Oh, Boki, is all this paraphernalia necessary? You need to wear a hat, my fro. This is the free state. Perhaps you should tell Mr. Major to put his clock back a hundred years. Oh, John, this little church dates back to the Boer Republic of the Orange Free State before the British invaded it for our diamonds. What is it, Boki? It's Philemon, my fro. Philemon is wearing a hat. He can't come into the church, my fro. But Philemon, you're a Christian, aren't you? Yes, madam. No, you Fro, the new South Africa is not here yet. Philemon is... 
Philemon, you stay here. Madam will say a prayer for you. Give God my love, madam. Look after the camera, Philemon. We apologize for giving them free medical services which enabled them to survive plague. We apologize for teaching them to read and write and even for putting their own language. We apologize for taking them into our houses, giving them food and for all those evil sins we must humbly beg. If they will accept our apology, we will gladly take back all of the above-mentioned evil deeds and return to Holland. Return to Holland. Philemon, hey, wake up! Church's outfit was lovely. Come, Philemon, let's film some wildlife. Yes, Miss Boogie. <laughs> For wildlife. Oh, no, man, come with me. We have some rare, protected, and endangered species on this farm. Rare, are you, bro? See. Aha. Here's my flow across the border doing social work. That's a homeland pass that thing. Put the powder on the hand. You put the hand on the baby's bottom. What do you call this in your language? Impo. 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 That's impo. Mm -hmm. Now remember, here are some pills. You must take these pills every day. Now, if you don't want to put the pills in your mouth, put the pills between your knees. That's my Uncle Carl. He used to work for the government. He's writing his memoirs. A relic from the barbarian ages. Ah, Philemon. Let's go talk to him. Hello, Uncle um, Carl. Hello, Boki. How's your retirement, Um Carl? Oh, Boki, no more group areas act, no more immorality act, Boki. They say it's all over. But I, I have kept record. My very best case. Come sit, Boki, sit. <laughs> Contravention of the Immorality Act. Black man, white girl, 1971. We were watching them through the window. We took photographs of them kissing. Look. Close up of his tongue in her open mouth. Ooh. At midnight, they went to bed. They undressed, naked. He kept on his vest. Then they committed sexual intercourse on and off between 12.03 a.m. and 12.54 a.m. See exhibits 36 to 67. Oh, God, where are the photos? Photos, photos. Can we see? Yes, come and see the photos, man. Yeah. Look here, look here. Sis, eh? More sis. Absolute sis. Also here, we have a tape recording of the act of fornication with some suspected oral stimulation. More photos. No more photos, Uncle. Hey, hey. <clears throat> we broke down the front door. Um, 32 seconds after they reached their second climax. Look here. Exhibit 77. Stains on the sheets. He also had a hard on. Sis, man. Exhibit 76. Her nipples were erect. <laughs> it looks fake to me. What do you know about fake, man? Look at all these color slides of nipples. <laughs> Besides the fact that I had a sworn testimonial from Sergeant Brandt, who fingered the nipples personally to reconfirm what I had felt. Come, Philemon, we must go, Matt. Further investigation showed that she was a female Caucasian of European descent. According to the racial classifications as laid down in the Population Registration Act, Section 58, Stroke 62, Nice blonde hair, blue eyes, thin nose, well-formed lips, pink nipples. Her pubic hair curls to the right when pulled through the teeth of a comb, proving that she is white. Oh, no, man, this man is senile. No, no, Miss Boogie, that's how they did it. I saw on my Kelly hair. Further investigation shows that he was a male non-Caucasian of colored and Bantu descent, eh? Dark skin, coarse hair, brown eyes, flat nose, large penis. His pubic hair curls to the left when pulled through the teeth of a comb, proving without a shadow of a doubt that he is not white. This is a white fish. No, hot man, they once had a proper way to do these things. What happens now? 
bookie the go. Agnes, so spooky, this helmet makes me look like a common worker. I hate it. Look lovely, mevrouw. Come in, please. I'm so frightened. Diamond mines, gold mines, tunnels, big black holes always make me so nervous. Bookie, are you sure this mine is safe? Madam, this is the biggest man-made hole in the world. <sighs> Debatable. Action, Philemon. Action, and madam, don't step back. You'll come out in Australia. Oh, one quick way to emigrate, eh? Norma, the reason I'm taking these terrible risks is to show you that when you find diamonds in your backyard, the world comes and steals them and leaves you with a big black hole. The British definitely redrew the map of South Africa, extending their borders into our Boer republics in order to steal our diamonds. Loosen up, Boggy, loosen up. This is not an indictment. This is a video postcard to a friend of South Africa. <sighs> Cut, Philemon. He's a member of the tribe that originally owned his land. Uh -huh. Is he real? Hmm. I mean, he's not just dressed up as a victim to get onto British television. They pay people to write for the 7 o'clock news. No, but Fro, I know Greek was. We once rode over one in a Land Rover. They lost long. Oh, yes, madam. The Brits originally stole this land from these people because of the diamonds. Goodness me. Hey, Grigwa, this is Mrs. Bezadin Hout, that important madam from Pretoria. Hi, uh, it's a man. What does he say? He says, hello, madam. Hello, Grigwa. Grigwa, you! Grigwa, please tell the camera. Action film. Tell the camera who stole your land. What does he say? He says, yes, madam. Grigwa, uh, Grigwa, Grigwa, tell the camera who stole your land. He says, yes, madam. Grigwa, Grigwa, did they give you money, these men in London who stole all your diamonds and turned you into a third class citizen? What does he say now? He says, the check is fine, madam. Can make it cash. I can make it cash. I can make it cash. I can make it cash. Oh. Is it 20%? I give it. Oh, woman, Clem, Roman. Okay, we're gonna get a 15 percent raise here. Yeah, I know. What does he say, Philemon? He says yes to everything. Yes to. You see, it is the British. It's always the British. Action, Philemon. John, John, I don't want to be personal, but that's the way it has always been. The English have been our arch enemies, the Catholics, the Antichrist, and the Jews, all thieves. No one cared about the blacks. You see, the blacks have never been a problem in South Africa. Oh, I am the most even-minded person I know. But you know, when I see such a pathetic example of British imperialism, I'm inspired to say, Britain, heal thyself. What did he say? He says, God bless you, madam. <laughs> God bless you, Griqua. You see, they still love us. In spite of everything our blacks did to us, they still love us. Ah, let go, let go. <laughs> John, look at these Beautiful, beautiful, um, well, these beautiful diamonds we're going to set into a little necklace for your wife from all the peace-loving people of South Africa. Just see that she doesn't wear them with her plastic shoes. <laughs> How nice. And if you don't believe what happened here, ask the Queen where she got her diamonds. No, next Thursday, when John goes to have his chat at Buckingham Palace, ask her. Hmm? And if she can't answer, you, you know the Queen got all her diamonds out of this Griqua's big hole. Mission accomplished. Where next, Boki? The city of gold, mevrouw. Home sweet home. <laughs> Cut, Philemon. I've been in a black township before. I came here once when they gave the freedom of Soweto to P.W. Boerta, but Mrs. Boerta and I stayed in the bulletproof car. You're safe with me, Miss Boki. Madam, no? this is where I live. The real South Africa. But it's so big. And so black. Where did I read that out of 271 black townships, only seven have electricity? Is that true, Philemon? Okay. Philemon cannot expect to get everything at the same time. He mustn't be so ungrateful. We gave him Nelson Mandela, let him give us some peace and quiet. Are the other 95% left? Ah, 
There it is, Beverly Hills Soweto, <laughs> the house that Mrs. Mandela built. Oh, Winnie's folly with a wall. The British taxpayer paid for that wall, I'm told. So that's where Nelson Mandela lives. Hell, it's nicer than some of our houses in Pretoria. Nelson has a great mission in life, Miss Bookie. <laughs> yes, it's to keep his wife quiet. <laughs> Miss Bookie, Nelson Mandela is free at last. He's the most famous black person in the whole world. He's over 70 years old, has university degrees and doctorates. And yet in this new South Africa, neither he nor I can vote. Any 18-year-old can vote, just because he or she is white. Do you know, as I was saying to, I can't remember who, Nelson is such a pragmatist after having gone overseas making their speeches, telling everybody to stick to sanctions against us. In spite of that, Nelson is big enough to come back home and accept this free motor car from Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, that same company that ignored sanctions for over 20 years. Shows how quickly saints can become politicians in South Africa. Which reminds me, Bookie, do you remember that woman in Santon who won Margaret Thatcher to dinner in that magazine competition in May? She's very upset. She spent a fortune on that dinner and Mrs. Thatcher never arrived. Philemon, let's go there right now, right now. I must find a decent toilet. Not that I have anything against mixed toilets. <laughs> After all, we are all human, give or take a gene here and there. How the other 5% lives. Why must be showing all this, Mufra? Is it true that rich people in the UK live in slums compared to us? <laughs> slums? Not quite slums, Bookie. But if we show them how well they could also live here, they might start using their heads and start reinvesting their lovely money. Oh, look at this beautiful house. Please, Philemon, point your camera. Ah, madam, I'm dark green with envy. Fair is fair. Margaret Thatcher was my prize. She was supposed to come here for dinner. As true as God, I had the whole of Johannesburg society waiting, and she never turned up. I mean, who the hell does she think she is, the Queen of England? Was, not is. A major change. We are making a little film, and I so much want to use your toilet. Oh, my God, the media, look at my hair. <clears throat> Listen, I really don't mind who moves in next door to me as long as they respect my privacy as I respect theirs. But have you seen what those blacks have got? Two new BMWs. Not that I begrudge them after all those terrible years of apartheid. But they're the same color. Oh my God, typical nouveau riche, hey? I mean, how are you going to convince people that you've got two new BMWs if they're both the same color? <laughs> I'm not from the media, Mrs. Fine. I am Mrs. Evita Besaid, no? Oh my God, the most famous white woman in South Africa. Oh, I'm so excited I could <laughs> plot on the spot. Please, my dear, come in. I'm sorry for the mess, hey? Do you know my downstairs maid, Dora, is on strike again? Why am I being punished, hey? I've never supported this government. I've always been anti-apartheid. I've always been a liberal. I've always treated my servants like decent human beings. God, it's not been easy. Do you know if I knew the road to the airport was safe, I'd emigrate. There are two things I just can't stand about South Africa. Apartheid and the blacks. But where can we immigrate to? I mean, where can we get the standard of living to which we are accustomed? Israel? Oh, do me a favor. I'm already in the frying pan. I don't intend jumping into that fire. Australia is? Australia <laughs> is final proof that there's death after life. My dear, we once tried to look at New Zealand, but it was closed. Where's New Zealand? And don't talk to me about the United Kingdom. My best friend Sharon is living in London. Do you know she can't even get a decent maid in London? Oh, God, give me Johannesburg any day. I'd rather be killed in my own bed than have to get up and make it myself. Excuse me. Excuse me, hey. Oi, oi. Take that thing out of here. Go into the kitchen. Beauty will give you some cool drink. Beauty, give this beast some nice cool drink, not out of our glasses. Give him cool drink in the mug with a Mandela face on it. Shame, you know, we have a whole warehouse full of free Mandela mugs. Thank God for Winnie. Shame. I really like blacks. Pity they're so primitive. 
You won't believe this, but my garden boy can't even read the small print on the rat poison box. <laughs> he eats the stuff himself, uh, but it's all the fault of apartheid. But maybe you and her... Um... No, no, no. As far as I'm concerned, and I know I speak for Boki as well, <laughs> we never supported apartheid. Apartheid was a silly little mistake that failed. <laughs> no, I also like blacks. Some of my best friends have black friends. Oh, Evita, Evita, listen, Evita, as true as God, I find the violence in this country absolutely disgusting. I hate it, I hate it. I don't mind if the blacks kill each other, as long as they leave my maids and garden boys alone. Beauty, Beauty, move to clerk to the left. The left. Outstanding. Ah. Mm. John here is our piece de resistance. We wanted to wait and give it to you in person when you came to collect your honorary degree like your predecessor did. <laughs> but knowing your crazy British politics, Mr. Heseltine might be out from under the hairdryer at any moment and bury his ambition in your bag. And so, with that in mind, Mr. Prime Minister, dear Prime Minister, when they decide it's time for you to bite the dust, don't hang about in Dulwich or Eaton Square. Come here to Pretoria. <laughs> John Major, in recognition for everything you've done for us in the past and everything you will do for us in the future, in thanks for being such a friend of the South African government, your own key to a peaceful future, your own little place in the sun, yes, political asylum whenever you want it. <laughs> John, we here in South Africa have also made mistakes in the past, like you people did in the Crimea, in India, in Kenya, in Rhodesia, in Finchley. After being a British colony for so long, what can you expect? But we now want bygones to be bygones. <laughs> we don't blame you British for everything. Some of it is also the fault of the Germans and the French and the Jews. We Afrikaners are not big enough to stand up and say, yes, apartheid was a terrible mistake. We are very, very sorry. We promise we won't do it again. Oh, what a mess. Black killing black, Rambo, justice, animal farm. John, will you and your people now believe me when I tell you that apartheid was only here for one reason, and that was to keep the blacks apart? And now that it's gone, which side do I take? Koza, Zulu? We don't even speak the same language. Oh, but what did J.R. Ewing once say in Dallas? Your enemy's enemy is your friend. Well, that's probably why we Afrikaners supported Nazi Germany, because we hated you British more. Maybe that's why we support Budulesis in Qatar against Mandela's ANC. What is it called? Divide and rule, madam. Oh, thank you, Philemon. Divide and rule. Yes, we learned that from you too. Except we do it too well here. We are now so divided amongst ourselves, we don't even have a nation left to rule. No one agrees on anything. John, isn't democracy also the right to disagree? Coffers! Ach, no, and Sarah! The coffers are here! Circle the wagons! Load rifles! Shoot to kill! God bless the poor She probably went to attack the Zulus like in the days of the great trick, thinking God is still on her side. No, no, Miss Bucky. God is busy. And where would your aunt go when the back of her wheelchair is against the wall? As close to her roots as she could, Philemon. The full tracker monument. Those who settled us with democracy 
and then ran away home, leaving us to carry the majority. The English, the English. We are marching to Pretoria. What? Black? Oh. 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 She's dead, Marcel. How do you know? She's smiling. She's dead. Oh, shame. The last of the old boor bitter enders. John, we didn't plan this tragedy. But as you know, life is its own file effects. Here we are at the sacred shrine of the Fuertrika monument, erected in memory of the greatness of the Afrikaner spirit against all odds. But now we have greater problems than merely hating the British. The future of the new South Africa is certain. It is just the past that is unpredictable. Thank you, Philemon. Fade to black. Only with pleasure, man. Well, that's that. Now, tick off the British bogey. Alert the Minister of Finance to expect major British investment. Who's next? The Russians. The Muslims. A message to Muhammad. Don't be so silly, Philemon, man. <laughs> Next week, an unsentimental and comic account of the trials of a most serious disability, motor neuron disease, with John Hurt and Charles Simon playing residents.